Hello and welcome to a new episode of Matrix Tutorials and what have you done to that poor home server? Aren't you ashamed to leave it in a terrible state like that? It must be suffering all day. What you really need to experiment, because we all like to experiment, what you really need is a lab, a disposable lab where you can do all sorts of experiment against your server and then just wipe everything and start over from a clean state. The good news is this is exactly what you're going to learn to do today. Your regular disclaimer that this is not a documentation for production setups. Uh, this is quite the opposite. This is how, how to deploy a, a lab with a very disposable server that you're going to wipe and reset up from scratch. Deploying your setup with containers is a good way to get a rather standard deployment and avoid a lot of headaches. But all taken in isolation, it can be a bit tedious to deploy your setup and keep the global picture in mind. Docker Compose is a good way to deploy containers that depend on each other and to keep a global view of what is happening. It's also often one of the first projects self-hosters interact with to deploy multi-containers applications. I wouldn't recommend Docker Compose in a production setup for a variety of reasons. Uh, if you're interested in what I'm personally using and why, I'm leaving a link to a blog post where I explain where I'm, what I'm using and why. Uh, the short answer is Ansible, Podman and Systemd because I consider that the hardware can catch fire anytime. Still, Docker Compose has a huge benefit. It's extremely simple and straightforward to deploy containers with it. But Docker and Docker Compose only address the container part. When you have a fresh server, you still need to install the Docker engine and Docker Compose, you need to open the firewall port. And if your containers rely on configuration files, you need to copy those config files in their respective volumes. This is the case notably for Synapse. This is a particularly salient problem when you want to have a disposable test lab to do awful things, wipe and start over with a clean state. Fortunately, there is a solution to this problem in the name of Ansible. We already used Ansible in the matrix tutorial number two off the top of my head to make use of the very neat matrix docker Ansible playbook, uh, which is written by the community. The problem we're tackling here is slightly different. The point is not to use Ansible to deploy your containers, but to use Ansible to put the server in a state where you can run your docker compose file without trouble with a pre-configured synapse, database and reverse proxy. This allows us then to do a lot of fun stuff with the Docker Compose file, potentially cursed deployments, just to test how things work, and then wipe the server and start over very quickly. So let's do this. So the first thing to do is to understand how Ansible works. Uh, if you are not familiar, Ansible is not an agent running on your server. It's just software that is running on your laptop or your workstation. Um, that is going to basically SSH into your server and perform actions on your behalf using Python. So naturally, the two things we need are a working SSH connection and Python installed on the server. Uh, for Debian, I'm not much of a Debian person myself, but uh, I know it's quite popular in the community. I know that on bookworm, uh, at least, you don't have Python installed by default. So we're going, first of all, to try to SSH into our server. So for my case, it's a fresh server. Um, so I need to accept, uh, to check and accept that the key is indeed what I think it should be. And then I need to log in using my password and I can log in. That's good. Um, the thing is Ansible is going to use SSH on your behalf, so you don't want to have to type your password every time. So what you should be doing is log off uh, your server, get back to your laptop, and then you can do SSH copy ID on chiptop.org. Here, uh, I'm assuming that on my laptop and on my remote server, I have the same uh, username. If that's not the case, you can explicitly give the username, so tab at chiptop.org. It's going to prompt me for my password uh, so I can copy the, the key on the server. Here I'm still on my laptop, but if I SSH on chiptop.org, now it's no longer asking for my password because I'm using my um, SSH key to authenticate. So now I'm on my um, server, so I need to install Python. So first of all, I'm going to 
uh, authenticate as root because by default I don't have sudo on uh, Debian and I'm going to apt install Python 3. So this is a completely fresh uh, Debian server, so nothing or almost nothing is installed there. All right, uh, now we can move on to this. So this is um, Visual Studio Code uh, with all the files I have I have for uh, my Ansible playbook. So the playbook, how does it look like? It, it's basically a YAML file and it's a sort of recipe where I'm going to describe all the steps uh, that my laptop needs to follow and to perform on the server on my behalf. Uh, so it can um, put the server in the state I want. So what I'm going to do, the first thing is I'm going to give a name to that server. So I, to that uh, playbook is called set up a fresh synapse. It's not really, really true uh, because uh, it's installing Docker, it's uh, copying the files, etc. But anyway, uh, then I'm going to tell it on which host this is going to be applied because Ansible needs to know on which server it needs to SSH. So I'm going to tell it all the servers in the group lab. And for that, I need to create an inventory file in which I'm going to give it all the servers in my lab. And all the servers in my lab are going to be chipjob.org. Uh, you can use an IP, but I'm much more comfortable using domains. Uh, then what do we have? Uh, this is a leftover that I should not have left. We can remove. We have a set of variables. So the ones I'm using here are the specific are specific to me. We're going to get back to that a bit later. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the deployment and you're going to see how, uh, why you should use different ones. Then we have a keyword, which is become. So become is basically, it means that uh, Ansible is going to log in as Tib on my um, on my server, and then it's going to use the become method, so su, uh, switch user, because Debian by default doesn't have sudo. So it's going to try to escalate to run things uh, as root, and what things it is going to run. So I have several tasks. Uh, the names are pretty, ex pretty explicit. I need to install uh, the repo dependency. So I want to install CA certificates and GNU PG, which are needed then to add the Docker signing key uh, to APT. Then I want to add the Docker uh, APT repository so I can install Docker using APT. So it's going to run APT and install Docker, Docker IO and Docker Compose. Uh, then it's going to create my volumes for me. So it's going to create the traffic certificates volume, uh, the Nginx volume, the Synapse data volume. It's going to set the right permissions for them, uh, the Synapse DB volume as well. It's going to set the right permissions for all the files that it's going to copy. I've got all those files here. We're going to see a bit later why they are templates. And then finally, it's going to copy the Docker Compose file in uh, root slash infra. And then once it has done all of this, I can manually uh, SSH into my server and perform Docker Compose up dash D and Docker Compose is going to do its magic. So um, actually, let's see what is happening. So we're going to run Ansible playbook dash I for inventory. So I need to specify where my inventory is. So I'm going to say inventory.ini is my file and I want it to run the lab.yaml playbook. Oh, and I forgot, of course, I need to uh, become ask password. It's not this one, it's... Uh, never remember uh, ask pass ask become pass uh, lab.yaml ask become pass so there we go ansible is then going to run all the various steps it's 
installs CA certificates, which was already installed. It installs GNU PG. It adds the Docker signing key, the Docker repository to APT. It's installing Docker, which can take a little while. Then it's creating uh, all the volumes that I need, um, copying all the files. I'm going to show you the files in a minute. Copying the Docker Compose file and it's finished. Uh, so now we can get back to our terminal. Uh, so I'm still on my uh, Debian server and I need to go in my root repository, it has created an infra directory, and in there I've got the docker compose.yaml. And uh, I can't use vim. There we go. And here it's going to look like what we had uh, on the very first matrix tutorial understanding docker compose, um, understanding synapse compose, synapse hosting with docker compose. Anyway, uh, if I run docker compose up dash d, it's going to pull all the images uh, and basically do the deployment. I hope traffic is not going to be mad at me or at least Let's Encrypt is not going to be mad at me because it's the second or third time today that I'm redeploying that setup and you have a limit in, in the number of uh, certificates that you can ask. Anyway, so it's asking all that. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to switch back to my uh, Visual Studio Code, so I can show you the home server of YAML. It's basically the Synapse configuration file, but it's a J2 and not just a YAML because it's a template. It's a template and I've got variables. Like for example, here I've got the matrix server name. It's here, 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 and basically in, in several parts where uh, it's going to use my server name. And this is defined in the variables of uh, the playbook. This is, when, when you are using Ansible in production, you usually don't shove everything in the playbook, but for the sake of this tutorial, we keep things very simple and um, we just use everything in, in the playbook. And I've got that matrix server name here. Um, so I'm defining a few things. The Let's Encrypt email is the email that Let's Encrypt is going to use uh, to tell you that a certificate is going to expire uh, then you've got the Synapse Postgres password, so it's a complex passphrase uh, that you should generate that is going to be used both in uh, the, well, the Synapse Postgres and the Synapse configuration, and they should match, of course, but uh, Ansible makes them match for you because if you go to the Synapse configuration file, you can see here the password is using that variable. And if you look at the docker compose file is going to generate a docker compose file with an environment variable here uh, for the synapse database that is postgres password and uses that variable as well so it's going to set up everything for you you just need to make sure that you've got uh, those variables created so now the tricky bit is uh, the synapse registration secret signing key uh, secret key and form secret as you can see those are rather complex and cryptic strings um, those are generated by Synapse when you uh, ask it to generate actually the configuration file. So what you need to do is you need to first have a Synapse running and you need to copy uh, over those um, properties here so that it can, um, so that Ansible can know uh, what to put there. So if we get back uh, to our terminal, there we go. We have, so let's do a docker ps, and we can see that everything is running, everything is healthy. Um, if we do a docker logs dash f synapse, we can see that synapse seems to be happy, which is always good news. And then we can go to the federation tester and try it with our domain, chipchop.org. And we can see that the server is federated. So I have just deployed a fresh new synapse right with that Ansible playbook. And now if I wanted to edit the Docker Compose here, oh, right, 
if I wanted to edit the Docker Compose file here, I could edit it, add new containers, add a bridge, add an app service, add anything. And I could do very cursed deployments and then decide that it's time to wipe the server and I could redeploy a very fresh Synapse so I can do brand new experiments again. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to leave a link in the description uh, to an article which contains the playbook and that's it. And of course, when doing the editing, I realized that there was a very important step missing. Uh, to allow the playbook to run, you need to install a collection. Uh, this, the step that is not going to work for you if you don't have the collection is the Docker volume creation, because this is not part of Ansible itself, but it's the Ansible community who created a sort of built-in script, if you want, called a collection that allows you to install um, to create new Docker volumes. So what you need to do is you need to uh, use Ansible Galaxy, Galaxy Collection install, and then you need to install community.docker. And you need to do that prior to uh, using the Ansible playbook command to actually run the playbook. That's it. Enjoy.